a picture. This I love this story. This one's fun. Let me get this up here. This is fucking. Sorry, there's a lot of there's a lot of background noise going on today. Um, I don't have the quietest neighbors. Anyway, here we go. Oh yeah, <laughs> I hope I don't get a content stream. <laughs> I hope not. They let you let it. They're, they're letting them watch it in school. Um, parents hit out at Waldorf School's explicit sex ed curriculum featuring graphic pictures. Nauseous. Um, parents at the progressive Waldorf School of Garden City, Long Island, are angry and some are threatening to pull their kids out because of new mandatory sex ed for fifth graders that teaches, among other things, oral and anal sex and masturbation with illustrations. Uh, this is in the New York Post. Um, it includes a controversial book called It's Perfectly Normal that um, parents say is meant for older kids and contains material too graphic for fifth graders. One mother said it made her physically nauseous. Uh, there's a whole page on contraception and vaginal and anal sex and more about how it's perfectly normal. This is a clearly agenda of push pushing and it's so outrageous. Um, I do remember them having a bunch of books like this sitting around in the health class when I was in middle school. I mean, that's sixth, seventh grade. So you're a little bit older. It's, it is amazing how much a sixth, sixth or seventh grader is older than like a, a fourth or a fifth grader. Uh, but I remember I would open it up and my biggest concern what I would look at it was because obviously there's a lot of penises in them. I was always my main priority whenever a penis showed up was how does mine measure up? It was very, very important uh, to me uh, that that I have a, a even as a, a young kid, I knew it would be important to grow up and be an adult with a, you know, a nice fat dick. <laughs> so every every time a dick, I'd be like. I'd be like looking like relative to body size. I'd be like, like I wanted to make sure I was on track. Um, I didn't, I didn't know a lot about sex, but I did know that having a big hog was important. Um, but yeah, they had that. Oh, they have more there. Um, they have, they have a bunch. Oh, we really sh should take a look. These are the, These are the pictures that the, uh, I guess, the parents are complaining about. And you, I mean, you get it, right? You zoom in there and it's some fucking. Yeah, I mean, this. Here's the thing. Like, this is a book for kids. This looks like this chick looks like she's fucking, you know, a, a 25 year old pansexual barista from Red Hook. Like, she doesn't look like a fifth grader. Um, you know, she literally looks like she just, she looks like it's, uh, it's December of 2020 and she just got off of a zoom call and now she's, uh, she's treating herself to an edible and some me time. That's what this looks like. I love this line here. When people masturbate, they usually rub their sex organs with their hands or with something soft, like a pillow. Like they're fucking, like they're going beyond like, oh yeah, like you may be, you may feel inclined to touch yourself at some point. Totally cool. You know, do it in privacy. Instead, they're like, no, here's what you want to do. Get a fucking, get a, get a pillow. Put it on top of the uh, the radiator for about 15 minutes. Not too long because it could catch fire, but just long enough to get it nice and toasty. Then fold it in half, bend it over, and just go to town. And then when you finish, make sure you sneak it into the laundry before mom can grab it. Like, that's, that's, that's the direction we're going here. Um, and then there's this picture. Fucking... Fucking shout out to this guy 
who who was so eager to whack off <laughs> that he uh, he left his t-shirt on, pants off, pumping away at his cartoon cock, but he left his t-shirt on, Pooh Bear in it. This is great. This is fucking... <laughs> Got the sneaks off. It would have been so much more if funnier if, like, his he, his pants were around his ankles and he was just, he was using his chin to hold his t-shirt up so he could just finish on his, uh, on his belly. Um, what is this? At the Waldorf School... Fifth graders whose fees are thirty thousand a year. Holy shit! Learn they learn when reading that the ancient Greeks thought that love between two men was the highest form of love. Uh, there's also a section in the book on how children, both of the same gender or of different genders, may even look at and even touch each other's body. This is a normal kind of exploring and does not necessarily have anything to do with whether someone will be straight, gay, lesbian, or bisexual. So we do understand why these people are being accused of grooming, right? Right? Like, you know, when when the tone of your coursework is, no, no, fine, just touch. It's called exploring, Timmy. The ancient Greeks used to do it all the time. Um... When that is the the sort of mood at, in in your fifth grade classroom, it's not hard to understand why people are worried uh, that there might be those out there who are looking to uh, to groom young children like that. This is they're almost writing a scene out of Airplane. Um, Oh, I think we got another picture. I think this is another picture. Hold on, let me pull it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is fucking incredible. I hope you guys can... I I know it's small, so I, I, I hope you can... Uh, you can see it when you, you get in there. Um, so this is obvious. Of course, the New York Post is uh, my generally my paper of of record. Five parents spoke to the Post about the new sex ed curriculum and asked that they not be identified, um, as they said that some parents have been intimidated and threatened with being labeled as against diversity for speaking up. Being labeled as cock blocks is what the teachers really wanted to say. One mother got upset, saying she feared retaliation from the school where parents sign contracts every February for their children's enrollment for the following year. Um, and I guess the concern is that they're saying the school is a place where they always let just let the children be children, and they tried to keep them away from social media and TV. And now all of a sudden, there's this ideology that, uh, as they say, is becoming the forefront of the school's focus. Yeah, ever since they got that... Uh, that new principal in. Yeah, ever since we hired Principal Randy. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> He's taken a keen interest in the fifth grade class. Um, it takes on a whole new tone when your little kids come home lecturing you about pronouns and asking about oral sex. Mommy, Principal Randy says I use too much teeth. <laughs> It must be uh, such a bizarre time to be a parent because I remember, uh, you know, I grew up, I'm a child of the 90s, 80s baby, 90s made me. Uh, and we would use in conversation what you would now consider to be homophobic slurs in casual conversation. In fact, I remember, I don't want to say the teacher's name, because uh, he might actually still be teaching and a wonderful fucking awesome one of the coolest teachers i had but we had a gay kid in class a very obviously gay kid he wasn't out but like it was like yeah you know it was all 
it was a very unspoken, like, you know, this kid was a fruitcake. Um, and, uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, uh, the teacher, I don't, I got, I'm trying to come up with fake names. We'll call the teacher, Mr. Jackson, <laughs> Samuel L. Um, uh, and we'll call the kid Smith. Um, and, uh, he would, if someone was doing something that was like a little feminine, like if, you know, for whatever reason, this guy was, she said this guy was from a country where, you know, maybe they didn't think fondly of, of homosexuals. So if anyone did, if any guy did anything even remotely, uh, effeminate mr jackson would compare them to smith <laughs> in front of the entire class <laughs> oh the 90s fucking ruled i just oh man what a fucking you know what i was talking before about the trauma of serving after 9 11 and all that bullshit but growing up in the 90s and then going to going to fight al-qaeda uh, you know to kick off your adult years actually pretty fucking better than whatever these little twinks are doing these days um and, and <laughs> yeah and if we're being uh, look i if you opened uh, a private chat that i was having with my friends that i grew up with in the 1990s um i will tell you uh, that it is peppered <laughs> with with words that you're no longer allowed to use in school um so you know what are you gonna do i just shout out to the parents out there i've i really really uh i don't know how you do it uh you know yeah apparently you have, you get you're branded a bigot these days if uh if you won't let if you don't let your kid have like a masturbation sleepover you know with with three different genders i think you get you you get branded some sort of bigot now um one of the main exercises in the uh, in the curriculum involve explaining to kids how they are incorrect in thinking certain things are only for one gender teachers distribute gender variation cards and kids are encouraged to imagine they woke up one day with a body and gender identity different from before this would be fucking you never would have been able to do this when I was growing up because we would have made a we would have turned this into a fucking zoo like you the teacher would have the teacher would have hurled himself out a fucking window if my friends and I got their hands on on a, a fucking project like this uh, but it would be incredible if this turned out like diversity day on the office and Michael like Michael Scott goes around and he assigns people different ethnicities. Uh, it would be great if, um, like you had like a kid who was assigned to be a they, them, and they, they got up and announced to the class that they woke up that morning with a strong urge to dye their hair purple and complain about things on TikTok. Like just make a complete, a complete farce out of the entire operation. Or if, uh, like if some conservative kid was assigned to be a woman for the day and he used it to, uh, to go off. Uh, on, on some platform about the evils of abortion. He came in with a pregnancy belly and he had like a, 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 a fucking toy baby soaked in fake blood underneath it. And he performed an abortion on himself in front of the class. Like you could really have a good time with this. If, uh, if you, if you're creative and a little bit bold, uh, Parents requested a town hall at the school last month, but said they were put off by the evasive and gaslighting responses by the administrators and faculty. Um, let's see. Uh, they're worried. Yeah, they're very they say that if these ideas are constantly being brought up, it's going to uh, influence the the consciousness of the child. One mother said she's worried about she doesn't like that her 10 year old is being forced to learn about masturbation after not hearing about it before and it's having an impact on how she thinks yeah yeah you don't want your 10 year old you don't want your 10 year old like like yeah ma leave me alone i'm rubbing one out um you know why is my 10 year old in the fucking bathroom uh for 45 minutes by bringing it up in class, my teacher is talking about this. I better pay attention. She says, she says her play has changed. Her thoughts have changed. Hey, it's the thing about jacking off. Uh, it changed who she was as a person. As a 10-year-old is still a kid. You know? A, a child. 
Like a 10 year old, they should start with a better, a better education about your body in general. Right. Like it shouldn't be it. First of all, it's also like fucking public educators are really aren't the ones to be doing this. Right. Um, the people who become you have a couple people people become public educators right you have people who do it because they want to coach a sport and you have to be a te- you know the teaching provides the full time salary that allows you to be a coach like fuck, Roger we got it you're a you're a coach and you kind of fucking teach uh, you have the ones that work in like the art department where art is their passion they're not good enough at it to do it on any sort of high professional level but they would like to do it professionally. This gives them a chance. They're sort of of the the those those who can do those who can't teach, right? They teach you how to do it, um, and then you have the bulk of most uh, school faculties. Especially this is a private school, but I'm sure it's very much these you know across the board. Um, and we see this so often in public schools that it you know really bears on, on my experience, but. Public educators and educators, I think, in general, are are people who got jobs that involve summers off, right? The bulk of the faculty at any given school are, it's a bunch of fucking lazy broads who wanted summer vacations off. They like to go to, they want to be taken to a happy hour. They want to blow some guy they met over a fucking, uh, you know, they swiped on. And they're going to meet some guy uh, fucking, you know, th- a Thursday in the summer, five o'clock before the bar gets too full. They're going to meet some guy over fried apps and espresso martinis. And then they're going to suck his dick in the parking lot. Right. That we've all hooked up with a teacher before. Um, who has one of the biggest one of the biggest fucking freaks I have ever laid my hands upon. Um, was a, a teacher. You just, she wanted everything shoved up her ass and I was more than happy to oblige. Um, but the point is, well, now that I think of it, maybe they're the perfect ones to be teaching sex ed. Um, but y- you might not want just some fucking broad who likes to, she's happy to have off for, for 10 weeks a year and that's why she she's doing the job. Uh, teaching your your kid uh, about how to masturbate. Um, when your kid gets a little older, he might ab- absolutely love the idea of that. Um, but <laughs> I understand why you might not want that for your 10-year-old. Like, what I think what they should be doing with these programs is, first, it should be teaching you literally about your body, how to wash yourself. Like, they should have fucking classes and shit on like how to like comb your hair, blow dry, like a full up and down, trim your like clean yourself, like hygiene and all of that. Like if you look at like not to get too MAGA, but if you look at like the like, kids in school from like the 1950s and their hair is all fucking combed and parted and tr- everything is uh put together, and they would watch these videos on here's how to conduct hygiene. Hygiene is when you scrub under and so that should be like the first step, like how to be clean and not because middle school and high school kids smell like fucking shit, right? You'd smell horrible. Uh, you don't know how to clean and take care of yourself. And so many adults don't know how to clean and take care of them. So there's so many adults out there who don't fucking wash their own assholes. It's amazing. Uh, so that should be like the first couple years should just be like good hygiene. Just drill in good hygiene, good eating habits. That's what it should be how to take care of yourself then as you hit puberty explain to them like okay we've been working on your relationship with your body for the past few years that's your body you can touch it in any way you would like it is up to you who is allowed to also touch your body that's called consent only you can give consent you know give them the whole fucking thing not fucking a drawn diagram of you know again what what looks like a chick who's been working on her uh, her PhD in women's studies for the past 12 years laying on her side with her hands between her legs and nothing but a sweater on going to town on her clit and vulva like right like do we we can understand that there's a difference between those two things um
let's see. Is there any more here? Um, oh, there's, uh, yeah, this is the, uh, okay. Yeah, these are the people who made the curriculum. OWL is part of the Comprehensive Sexuality Education Initiative that was backed by President Obama after he took office uh, and cut most ties with years of abstinence-themed sex ed programs in, in favor of, of CSE. Uh, yeah, and I'm not a fan of abstinence. They, when I was growing up, right, sex ed was like, if you, you know, if you touch a We've got on this weird thing where it was like, when I was growing up in the 90s, it was like, uh, if you touch a woman, you, you will probably get AIDS or get her pregnant. Like, it was like, it was basically, they taught you that sex was sort of a minefield of AIDS and pregnancy. When in reality, the ones you really got to watch out for are fucking like herpes, HPV, and like, you know, chlamydia and shit. Um, and then at some point in the 2000s, it turned into all sex is rape. Uh, and then all of a sudden now, we're in this weird spot where it's like, well, actually, uh, you know, if you if you don't engage in, uh, you know, heteroflexible polyamory, you're a bigot. Um, so it's gone. It's such a swing. Like, it's like, let's maybe find a middle ground where we we Venn diagram the more important sort of broad strokes messages from these things, you know, have sex responsibly with people who consent to doing it with you and with whom you would like to have sex. Uh, and by the way, be accepting of others and their behaviors uh, in, in so much as they uh, do not infringe on uh, on your own bodily, you know, what have you. I don't know. I can figure it out. I I got a big brain. The, the Obama administration handed out more, more than 100 million to Planned Parenthood entities and their partners. Uh, how about a couple bucks? How about a couple bucks over to Mike Montone, who just figured out the whole goddamn thing? How about that? Um, Sharon Slater, co-founder of Family Watch International, said the OWL curriculum used by the Waldorf School and Garden City scored 15 out of 15 possible harmful elements in the organization's analysis. Um, this type of curriculum is intended to divide children from their parents' values, Slater told the person. Uh, post it's about values deconstruction they're told at a young age they have a right to sexual pleasure and sexual knowledge it often turns kids against their parents views and values on sex and sexuality school administrators don't worry about backlash because they know they have the backing of the biden administration yeah that's because the uh what's the teachers union uh the federal teachers union is like one of the biggest fucking donors of the democratic party um i mean this if they had fucking tried this uh, when in the 90s and early 2000s, the older older millennials and uh, younger Gen Xers would have had a fucking ball with this shit. We had in uh, in health class, we got an assignment to write like a, a sex uh, ad, like an ad, like, you know, like a, a public service ad. Like you're in college. They're posted all over the fucking dorms, like about like drinking and date rape and stuff like that. So my friends and I uh, made one about using condoms. And it said, if you're not going to wrap it, go home and jack it. Um, and it was uh, a picture of uh, a fucking, it was two pictures of penises. One was a condomed penis um, with like a green check next to it. And the other was a fucking, uh, an uncondom penis and, uh, a guy masturbating. And it was a detailed dick with like veins and hairy balls and stuff. Um, so that was what we submitted for our project. Um, I've mentioned before on here that we had a question box that we used to stuff with, um, with just obscene questions and they would answer them because the, uh, the idiots thought that, you know, that these questions were being asked by maybe some kid who's like shy about his se their sexuality or whatever. They're afraid to ask these publicly. So we got to answer them. And they were all about like getting strap on shoved up your ass um, or like, you know, fucking sharing a dildo with your buddy, like just completely fucking ridiculous, ridiculous shit. One was about 
uh, one was about taking a finger in the ass during a blow. Like a girl, we we had a chick write the question for us, so it looked like it was in girl handwriting. And she, we had her write, like, you know, my boyfriend likes to have a, a finger up his ass during during oral sex. Does that mean he's kind of gay? <laughs> and the health teacher was just as fucking dope. He just had to stand up at the front of the room and explain that it's not gay to take a finger in your ass during a blowjob. <laughs> oh, those were the fucking days. Uh, oh, and of course, on... Uh, in the uh, in the extra credit section, on a, uh, there was no extra credit section. I made an extra credit section on on a health test, and it just had the old you know that old like fucking bar joke like hey, if your uncle Jack was stuck on a horse, would you help your uncle Jack off the horse? <laughs> I just wrote that at the end of the test for for fun. <laughs> My uh, my father got a call from the health teacher and the principal, <laughs> and they 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 read the joke to him. <laughs> I think I still have I think I still have copies of all of this shit. By the way, I have to. One of the things I'm going to do when I eventually move, or like when I put all my stuff, you know, I'm gonna get a storage thing for for some of my shit here because i have too much stuff um i'm going to go through some of my uh i have these just fucking big foot lockers just full of stuff from my old uh, athletic and academic careers um so i will i will dig through those and see if i can find some of these gems um yeah oh my god incredible um where are we at wow we're at an hour already um okay jesus um all right a whole fucking hour i do have i have other stories keep going yeah i'll do you know what i'll do at least one more 